Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install uh, um, Windows for Linux, uh, Visual Studio, and Ansible, and basically get an Ansible environment up on your Windows 10 computer so that you can uh, start writing Ansible code with Python. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is download uh, Visual Studio code. So I'm going to look for that. And I'm going to download that. So I'm going to download 64-bit system installer. OK, so this is downloading. Uh, now, while this is downloading, the next thing I'm going to do is show you where you pull the Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, WSL code from. So you can open another tab. So the nice thing about Windows for Linux is it lets you run a Linux machine in a Windows environment. And it's really, uh, it's very, it's very handy, as you'll see. So I've already done this, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, basically, what we are, we're going to do is copy this command, and we're going to run the PowerShell as administrator. And then you would just run this command, hit enter, and run it. I've already done it. I've already downloaded PowerShell. So I've already, I have it. So our VS code is set up. So we're going to say yes. This might take a while too. So I accept the agreement. I'm going to install it. It's Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a desktop item. I'm going to add Open with Code to the Window Explorer file context. And I'm going to register the code as an editor for supported file types. And add the path. Next, so I'm going to install VS Code. All right, so now we have VS Code installed, and we have Windows for Linux installed. When I install VS Code, it's recommended as you have Windows for Linux, so I'm going to install that as well. Oh, so I don't have a distro on WSL right now. So now one thing here is that you can say what you want your uh, color scheme, color theme to look like. I like light. I think it might come up with dark. Um, so whatever is useful for you. So we've brought up Visual Studio Code. OK, we'll address that again uh, in a few minutes. OK, so now we have WSL. What we want to do is go to the Microsoft Store and download some code. So if you search here, you can download Ubuntu. So I would download the 18.04. Now, I actually have already downloaded. Um, let's see if I install this, if it finds that I already have it. I'm not going to sign in. And it's going to download it. So it's already downloaded. OK. The other product that I'm going to want to so I'm going to launch, well, actually, I'm going to launch this right now. So it's ins installing Ubuntu. And while that's happening, the second item that you want to look for is Windows Terminal. And you want to just download that. I've already downloaded it, so I can just launch it. OK, so I'm going to set up a username Oops. and a password. OK, so now I've created Ubuntu. So I have Ubuntu running on my, on my Windows 10 system. And I don't have to, uh, I don't have to launch a virtual box or something to run a VM. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal. So Windows Terminal, and there's this little down arrow thing here. And I say, oh, I want to open an Ubuntu 18.04 window. 
Now, I edited this before, so let's show it to you. So here are the settings. When this first came up, it was very dark the last time. So I changed the settings in the Windows PowerShell, and I'm going to show you how we do it. So I added a color scheme, which I found on the net, called One Half Light. And this is, it, it's defining all the colors that are going to be used. And I say that I want to use that color scheme, One Half Light, in my Ubuntu 1804 window. So if I take this out, okay, so let me save this file. So you can see <clears throat> what the color theme looks like without it. So if we do an LS, I find this to be unusable. So I like my color scheme to be light. I'm old. So I do save. Okay, back to my light. Now, when we do this LS, I don't like the fact that the directories are sort of I don't know, blocked out with this green color. So what I can do is change my LS color. And export that. And then if I do an LS again, I can see my directory names. So that makes me happy. Okay, so now we've got Ansible. We've got, so now we're, we're just running Ubuntu in this window and there are other, uh, there are other Linux distros that WSL supports, but this is really easy to do. So now what I wanna do is install what's necessary for Ubuntu. So first thing, let's make sure that our code is up to date. So we'll just update. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, while that's happening, the first time I installed this, I didn't actually install it correctly to run it Ansible on Ubuntu. So we'll go here and go to this page to see how to set, configure Ansible up on Ubuntu 18.04. So these are the commands that you're gonna to use to install it. So we're gonna pick these commands up. When this finishes, we'll run that. First time I installed this, I did it in the dark window and it, that said press enter to continue or control C to cancel. I couldn't even see it. So, okay, so we, we just did the BT update. We'll do it again for the new release. And now we're gonna install Ansible. So now when this is installed, the first time I installed Ansible, I didn't do all these commands. And when I went to Etsy Ansible hosts to see my host file, it wasn't there. Um, so that's something you can check to make sure that you've got Ansible installed correctly in your, in whatever release of uh, whatever OS you decide to run. Okay, so I, I paused that. Um, this is going pretty fast compared to the first time I downloaded this because I already downloaded a lot of these packages. This install is going to take you a lot longer. So if we look at uh, the Etsy Ansible host file there, host, and what I'm going to want to do is add my host that I'm going to include. I'm going to just do that right now. So for Ansible, Ansible uh, lets you set up infrastructure on different
code. So um, I'm, I'm gonna, okay. So basically it lets you target different hosts to provide, to run playbooks on. So I'm gonna chart, I'm gonna set up some hosts right now. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is set up my Ansible interpreter. I'm gonna do all my work in Python 3. So I'm gonna set that up uh, in this Ansible Etsy host file. Now you can have inventory files wherever you want them, but I, I'm just doing this for now because it's uh, easy. And I wanted to show you where uh, where this all happens. So, okay. All right, so that's done. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is install Python 3 pip. So I'm gonna install, I wanna use Python 3. I don't know why, I, I've learned Python. So in the last two weeks I've learned Ansible, Python, and this WSL system. So I decided I would make a video to document how it all works before I, you know, before I forget again, because I will. And uh, so I thought I'd share it on YouTube. So this is going to install this. Okay, so that installed, it took a little while. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is install the user Ansible, or exactly, I'm not exactly sure what this is doing, but this is what I was told to do. And I'm gonna let happen. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna do is install Ansible. Sorry, install Ansible. So while that's installing, let's talk about uh, Git. So you're gonna probably use Git to uh, get to your repository, right, to get anything off GitHub. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set up your uh, RSA. You're gonna wanna generate um, a, a key gem for RSA. So you do SSH key gem minus T RSA and I'll generate an RSA pair. And you're going to take that value, copy it. You're going to, it's going to be in uh, uh, tilde, tilde slash dot SSH um, ID RSA pub. So you're going to cat that file and then you're going to copy the value over to GitHub for your login so that you can use that to log in from this system. Uh, you're going to set up your username and email, right? So user.email is foo.r.com. And then you're going to set your name. Oh, I'm then you're going to set your name, uh, your username. And when you have all that done, then you're, you can pull down uh, your code from Git. So while this is finishing up, I'll run, oh, th that's finished. I'm gonna run all this offline and pull down some code. Okay, so I'm writing some Python code, so I'm actually going to install um, uh, some, a couple of other packages. Actually, I don't see them here, so let me just see. Pip three install uh, James path. And pip three install requests. Oops. Okay. So that's because I'm doing some Java work. All right, so now I've, I've downloaded, uh, I've downloaded some code from Git 
And what we want to do now, I'm going to close VS Code. Actually, let's make sure it's close. Yeah, let me just close this. So I'm going to say code dot here, and that's going to open up VS Code in my directory. OK, so it's brought up my, my code. Now, this is the directory structure of where all my code will me get. It's welcome. I click on here. This is all of my files that I've written and that I'm writing. Uh, this is my source control. So if I were to change something, OK, so actually, these are packages that you can run. So if you wanted to install uh, some other packages into this, you could install it here. So we're going to install Python. So this is going to be installed. And so then we'll be able to write code and actually debug Python code from here. So if you wanted to look for like a Python debugger, you can do that. Uh, if you want to, um, if you, you know, there's lots of different, there's lots of different extensions for code that you can install. Now, if you go to this view, there's a command palette. And there are commands that you can run. So if I've installed Git previously, so if you wanted to clone a Git repository, or if you wanted to commit your files or do any of that, you can do that here. So this is a reload required. So uh, after Python, so let's, let's just do that. Okay, so I'm going to look at my code. Now, say I were to change um, some code here. I have some YAML code. Say I wanted to change the verbosity to 2. Save the file. Then if we go and look at the Git, it shows you what files have changed. And then say I undo this change. Save the file. It goes away because it hasn't changed anymore. So there's no change to check into the repository. Uh, if I wanted to run some YAML, uh, if I wanted to run some Python code to do some testing, I could run the debugger from here. And no, OK, so I select the Python interpreter. I'm going to run the v6. I'm going to install PyLint here, helping me know things I should be doing. So it's installing PyLint. And then if I wanted to run and, and debug the code, I'm going to run it Python. No, it's running and running debugger. If I wanted to put a, a breakpoint, I could do that. Run the code again. Stop. Oh, I didn't put the breakpoint. Okay, let's run it again. So I'll stop at the breakpoint if you wanted to work through code. So for Python, it's nice to be able to do, you know, to debug it right in the window. Uh, and that's about it. That's about all I have to help. Um, I found this to be really, really helpful uh, and an easy way to write code um, because I was learning Ansible and Python it was helpful with uh, if I had, you know, my, if my indentation was off, I get my little squiggles telling me that. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good information uh, that is helpful here. So good luck with everything you're doing. Take care. Be safe.